it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Madison. It is nice to meet you. I am very excited for today's video. Today is the long awaited LSAT video. Now the LSAT is terrifying. I'm going to be honest. I've taken it three times. It, it still scares me to no end. This video is specifically for all my people out there who have chosen to self study for the exam. Now self studying is an attractive choice because it's more cost efficient. You can kind of work on your own schedule. You don't have to hire a tutor or anything, but self-studying has to be done right in order for it to work and for you to get a high score. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite self-studying tips. I'm going to be giving you all of the resources that you should use when self-studying and talk about how to start developing a self-study schedule. With the LSAT Flex, so the online version for some people who are taking it in the coming months, I do believe that these tips will still hold true. So don't worry about that. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you subscribe. I have a playlist with all of my law school advice related videos and stuff like that. You can click that in the cards if you'd like to watch it and I would love to have you as a subscriber. So let's go ahead and get into the video. So let's start with my self-study tips. Now in this video, I will be linking a lot of stuff in the description box. Don't worry, I'm not sponsored in case any of you were in case any of you were wondering, I mean, not sponsored, not spons. I just thought I would throw everything in the description box so it was easier, but I do think you should take a diagnostic test. Now, I didn't do this. I know. Basically, this video could be titled, Learn From My Mistakes. Take a diagnostic test. It'll help you gauge where you are, what you need to work on, what sections you're naturally better at than others, because I'm telling you, even if you think you're going to be horrible at every section, I guarantee you there will be a section that you're just you're for some reason you're good at it and you're like why but that's why you take the diagnostic test so you know where you stand i'll put a link to one in the description box it's one that's offered for free by lsac it is a pass test so take that time yourself and then score it and see where you are at my second tip is give yourself ample time to study i would say if you're you need to give yourself at least two to three months two to three months is ideal but this does not have to be full time studying. I think a lot of people put paint the LSAT as something you need to be studying for eight hours a day, five days a week, putting the same effort into it as a full time job. That's just not the case. I mean, I didn't get a 180, so maybe I'm wrong. And maybe if you put all that work into it, you will get a 180. But I don't think it should be a full time job. So practicing an hour a day for three months up to the exam is going to be a lot more helpful than practicing eight hours a day, five days up to the exam. If you're practicing for eight hours a day leading up to the exam, I just, I would feel like you would get burnt out. I don't, I know I would, and you don't want to get burnt out. It's a marathon, not a sprint. I recommend just, you know, part-time study. It doesn't have to be full metal. What is it? doesn't have to be pedal to the metal. Take it at your own pace, but give yourself enough time so that you're not cracked under pressure. My next tip is to take tons of practice tests in real conditions. So this means put your phone outside of the room, get a watch, time yourself every single section, see how you're doing under test like conditions. I did not do this at all before my first LSAT. I'm just the poster child for good test taking habits. What can I say? Taking a test in real conditions before the exam is so helpful because my first LSAT that I took last July was the first time I sat down and did a test from start to finish and the mental fatigue was insane. It really is just like running. If any of you ran cross country, if any of you do any sort of running sport, you know you have to familiarize yourself with the fatigue. You're not just going to go out and run a 5k when all you've been doing is running a half a mile every day. You know, you really have to work yourself up to it. And it's the same thing with the LSAT. It's about training your brain to be able to cope with that amount of mental fatigue because the five hours your brain is going to be so tired. So taking as many tests as possible in test-like conditions, not getting distracted, not getting stumped on a problem and like flipping and checking the answer because I found myself doing that a lot. Taking it exactly how it would be taken on test day will help you so much in the long run. While taking practice tests is 
a really good way to familiarize yourself with the length of the test, how hard it is mentally. It is also important to know your strengths and weaknesses. This comes into play when you just don't have five hours to block out of your day to take a practice test. Logic Games was my best section. I thought Logic Games were kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. When I was taking the LSAT and Logic Games was the first section, I'd be kind of bummed because I feel like I got the fun part out of the way first and then I don't get to do it again. I didn't spend as much time on Logic Games. If I only had an hour to study, I would go to logical reasoning, my worst section, and I would do a section of logical reasoning, look over why I missed the questions that I did. It's about knowing your strengths and weaknesses, especially if you're only studying for an hour a day, which is completely fine. Don't beat yourself up if your scores don't improve dramatically from practice test to practice test. I know this is hard because if you're putting in so much work, and then you get the exact same score, it feels like you're not progressing and it's it feels very hopeless. I'm not gonna lie, I've been there. Each test is different. And that's the thing, you can do all the studying in the world. Some tests are harder. Sometimes the July test is harder than the October test. And that's just how it is. The LSAT is unfair in many, many ways. If you're going from minus 10 on a logical reasoning section to a minus eight, you might not feel like that's a big jump. Two questions can make a point difference on test day. So if you feel like that two questions is nothing, it really is. It can make a big difference in your percentile and therefore your score. So don't beat yourself up if you don't see yourself progressing. Like I said, all the tests vary. Some tests are just easier. And that doesn't seem fair, and that doesn't seem very standardized for a standardized test, but it's just kind of how it is. Take notes on the type of questions that you are missing and why you are missing them. So in the logical reasoning section, there are tons of question types and assumption questions were always the absolute hardest for me. So for example, if you're like me, maybe you're missing assumption questions because you are having trouble with the difference between a necessary assumption and a sufficient assumption, then that's something you need to focus on learn how to distinguish the two, take a couple hours and learn that concept because you will reap the benefits on test day. It might seem stupid that you're not practicing actual questions and you're trying to understand these concepts, but it is so important. My final self-study tip, and this is kind of going into the test a little bit, and I didn't want to give like a lot of like test specific tips, but for self-studying, I found this really helped me. And this is trust your predictive brain. So this is something that is touched on in the uh, materials, the resources that I'm going to recommend. This is what I mean. Before you read the answer choices, just after you read the scenario, predict what you think the answer is going to be. Hmm. Because this is in the question stem, I feel like this component has to be in the answer for it to make sense. Predict what you think the answer will be, look at the answer choices, and see if any of them line up with your prediction. Your predictions are very valuable in the LSAT. Don't let the answer choices sway you. Now we are going to move on to the resources that I personally used while studying for the LSAT. I ride or die by these resources. Honestly, these books are talked about a lot. These are the power score, literally the, the, the Bibles of the LSAT. These books are amazing. I love them. These will build you from ground zero. If you have no knowledge about anything about the LSAT, this book will take you there. It gives you a breakdown of what the section is, what kinds of questions are asked, frequent errors that are made by students so you can correct them, which is very helpful. They give you a lot of question examples and then they explain why the answer is what it is. So you will get your money's worth. I definitely recommend. I can't vouch for these enough. Okay. Another thing is obviously you need prep tests. For these books, they give you questions, but it, you just can't, you can't simulate a real test day with just these books. You need some release tests. You need to go to the source. And these aren't that expensive on Amazon. You can find a ton of free LSATs online. I just prefer these because these are ones that are actually released by LSAC. I know they're legit and they do have the answer keys in the back which is nice and it shows you how you would score so you can convert your raw score to an actual LSAT number that you would have scored on that test. I think using these in conjunction with the power score books is a very, very good combo to maximize your self-studying potential. 
and I do think you should get more recently released tests. I don't even think these are that recently released. Prep test 52 to 61, that cannot be recent. Mm, these are like from 2007 to 2010, which tests go through cycles. Test makers favor some types of questions some years, and then they don't use that type of question for years on years, and then it comes back. It really is a cycle of trends, kind of like fashion. LSAT test makers, it's like fashion. Things are going in and out of style. Taking more recent prep tests would probably be beneficial, but I did love these. This next one is a gem. This is, I love this. So I listen to podcasts all the time. Actually, one of my subscribers commented on one of my videos recommending this podcast and I was obsessed with it. I never got to thank her, but it was really a great podcast. I still listen to it and I'm done with my cycle just because I love all the like nerdy law school LSAT talk, but it is the Thinking LSAT podcast. Now, I listen to this religiously while I was working out, walking to class, when I just needed background noise. They give so many helpful hints in this podcast. This podcast will give general law school application advice, which we all know and love and need desperately. They'll give advice on the LSAT. They'll take questions from listeners about specific LSAT questions. And most importantly, they have very up-to-date info about the LSAT. So they break down every time there's an LSAT, they'll break down the test, talk about if it was an easy test, was it a hard test, what kind of questions were popular. And it's so helpful. It's where I get my LSAT news. This podcast is great. and helps you dive deep into the world of LSAT and deep into the minds of the test makers. It is really cool. I love it. Now my final resource is actually university courses. So I know not every university might offer these, but you should definitely look to see if your university offers some sort of course that might help with the LSAT. I took a symbolic logic class my junior year, and that class helped so much with the basics of the LSAT, even though it wasn't titled in any way to make it seem like it would help with the LSAT, it did. Through this class, I learned how to map out arguments and determine their validity solely based on their structure. I think this is so important because the test makers love to use irrelevant, fancy words just to confuse the test taker. A common genetic mutation that lowers levels of the enzyme cathepsin C severely reduces a person's ability to ward off periodon periodon periodontitis or gum disease. The enzyme triggers an immunological reaction that destroys and weeds cells and eliminates infections in the mouth. The researchers are developing ways to restore the enzyme to normal levels. What? You need to know absolutely nothing to take the LSAT. The test makers use these confusing words and these sciency concepts to confuse you, but you don't need to know what these words mean. You don't need to have any prior knowledge about dental hygiene, even though you should, before you take the LSAT. All you need to know is the argument structure. By knowing the structure of the argument, you are opening yourself up to get a lot of the questions correct, even if you have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, because I had no idea what they were talking about. Here are some of my tips for developing a self-study schedule. So I think studying for the LSAT during the summer is better, but it can be done during the academic year. I did document a week of LSAT studying in a vlog back in October before I took the LSAT, so I will put that in the cards if you want to see what a week of studying looks like while also balancing schoolwork. It is tough, but it is doable, so don't freak out if you're also maintaining 15 credit hours or however many you're doing and you want to study for the LSAT at the same time because you can definitely do it. So create a schedule that works for you. I know that's so stupid. I I'm sorry, but it really is true. Remember that the LSAT is like a marathon. It's not like a sprint. And you need to focus on different types of training on different days. That's how you're gonna build your skill. That's how you're gonna build your endurance. And that's how you're gonna succeed. So if one day you sit down and you're thinking, okay, today I'm gonna work on speed. I'm gonna try to finish the section in 35 minutes and then I'll score it and see how it is. Other days you're going to sit down and you're going to say, okay, I'm not going to time this at all. I just want to make it through the section and be as accurate as possible. Think about why I'm making the choices that I'm making, checking my answers, seeing why I got the ones wrong that I got wrong. You need to do a mix of these kinds of training styles in order to be successful. Because if you're just doing practice test, practice test, practice test, practice test, and you're not taking a break and wondering why you're missing questions you're missing, 
and why you are never finishing the section in 35 minutes, then you're not going to improve. So you have to be making adjustments. It's a lot of trial and error, but you need to incorporate different types of training, for lack of better term, to be successful on the LSAT. And overall, this brings me to kind of my closing, my closing argument, if you will. The LSAT is one factor of your law school application. It is arguably one of the most important factors along with your GPA, but it is not the end all be all determinant. And I think a lot of people get caught up in that. It is important but it's not make or break. If you suffer from test anxiety, if you're not good at standardized testing, that does not mean you're not gonna be a good attorney. That does not mean that you're not gonna get into law school at all. Do the best that you can and know that if you work really hard on other aspects of your application, all will be well, my friend. I do have a video of me on test day and I give a lot of really good test day tips. And I just watched that video, it's from January. I just watched that video a couple days ago and the tips are really good and I still, I still stand by what I said. So I'm gonna put that in the cards too if you want more test day specific advice. Yeah, I think that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything else you want me to talk about in regards to the LSAT, each specific section, breaking things down even more, I would love to do that. But until then, I will bid you do. What? I hope you subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video.